there is no doubt that the constitution of our country is as great a document as any that stands anywhere. And it's equally great and unfortunately true that the constitution is simply ignored. We have censorship here. Uh, in other countries there's censorship and they say they have censorship. Here we say we have freedom and we have censorship. Uh, a film of mine in the year of the pig about the war in Vietnam when it opened in California the theater was broken into at night and somebody took a big black paintbrush and in tar drew down the screen the word traitor. That's the most effective criticism there is. There's no review in the New York Times, no review in Variety, no re review in, in any fancy magazine that would damage a film as much as damage to property because that's something we understand really wholeheartedly. And the word was out, there was a story in Variety, and the film never appeared again in a theater until much, much later, and it made no difference. When that film opened in Houston, they threatened to bomb the theater, actually. So there were two significant forms of criticism. That's a very serious kind of film criticism, bombing and ruining a screen. With Milhouse, of course, I expected it. I mean, Nixon was the president, and I made a film against him. Under the Constitution, I was guaranteed that right. But uh, there, uh, on many levels, there was not only censorship, but uh, mad dog behavior in the White House. Memos and letters from Dean to Haldeman, from one person to another. There was only one intelligent person in the White House. At that time, a moderately obscure lawyer named Fred Fielding, who became much more powerful under Reagan. But it was Fred Fielding who wrote a memo and said, we must now do nothing to D'Antonio. We must not mention this film. The film will die of its own accord. Everything we say about it or that we do to, to this film will simply help it. I thought that was an intelligent view of censorship. 